Aloha. It's May the 20th. It's Wednesday. It's 11 o'clock. That can mean only one thing. It's Trump week. I'm Tim Apicella, your host. And today, like every other week, we have, a, we have so many things on the plate to talk and discuss. Uh, let's just jump right into it. Uh, the title of the show is uh, Vaccine, No Vaccine, We're Back. And so is the death toll climbing with COVID deaths. Uh, this is a title that basically indicates and implies that opening the economy may be more important than the, the rising death toll in this country. There is a balance. It is important to open the economy. No one disputes that. The question is, what is the balance? What is the proper way to forge ahead, to get people back to work and open the economy, but at the same time, stop the cases, prevent the cases, and more importantly, stop the deaths of Americans. We're at 92,000 deaths. And for me, the way I perceive this whole problem is the economy is more important. Donald Trump's re-election is more important than the deaths of many, many Americans. Uh, I want to discuss this with our guest, Winston Welch is here with us today, Stephanie Dalton and Cynthia Sinclair. Welcome everybody. Hey, hi. Aloha. Aloha. Winston, let's go right to you. Um, there's been many discussions about how one opens up this economy. We know that the, the, many of these states, Texas, uh, Georgia, Alabama, they're not necessarily opening the economy as per the administrative guidelines on consecutive weeks of declining cases before things are opening up, uh, be it bowling alleys, be it restaurants, be it hair salons, uh, you name it, tattoo parlors. Uh, they're just opening up and we're seeing on the news what I would call just blatant disregard for wearing masks and people crowded together in restaurants and bars. And will this cause a second rise, a second spike in cases and deaths? So what do you think the balance is and where do you think we are on this issue, Winston? You know, it's, it's a good question and, and it's a, obviously the question of the day on everyone's mind is how do you strike the balance? You've got mass unemployment, the worst here in Hawaii of everywhere, and yet everyone here wears masks. If you're not wearing a mask out in public, you're basically considered a pariah or a sociopath because we realize there's value in wearing the mask. That's just like a, a no-brainer. But it, it, you have other folks that are saying, yes, but we got to reopen this economy sooner than later because the, the risk of deaths and suicides and drug overdoses and uh, you know, spousal abuse and all of that the social ill coming from folks not having their work and something to do and contribute meaningfully is going to be worse of an impact than if it opened up the economy. So I can understand that. And then they're looking at, you know, information out of Sweden that said they didn't have as strict of conditions as say Norway did, but their death rates are comparable. I'm not sure that we have a full picture on that or not, but obviously with the States, it's a free for all. It is um, do what you want to do and let's see how it comes up in a couple few weeks. And here in Hawaii, we're at one end of the spectrum where we have no new cases yesterday. Well, one in the Big Island, but other states, we're gonna see mass surges and what that means and how we're gonna to respond to it is the question of the day. How Let me we ask are, you this, what, what goes through your mind when you see, uh, uh, you watch the news and you see uh, video footage of people gathering shoulder to shoulder uh, in big, large groups, more than 10, you know they're not all living in one same household and there's either no masks or if there are, some people have them, some people don't, and they're in very close proximity. What goes through your mind when you see that? Winston. Oh, I'm sorry. I, you know what? Here, because we're here, I, here in, in Hawaii, um, it doesn't make sense to us because we have been following the guidelines of our health department, of our governor, of even the CDC, which says wear a mask in public. This prevents spread of this illness. So for us, we don't understand that. But from the other perspective where they say, no, this is against my freedom. I don't want to wear a mask. We need herd immunity. It, there's a, a completely different perspective there that, that we're not embracing in Hawaii and that um, I think we're fine not to embrace uh, let's see what happens in the other states and, right. and we can make decisions down the road, but there's no sense in putting everyone at risk here um, okay. before we see some, maybe some massive surge that's popping up um, 
unfortunately, I think we're going to be seeing that. But Okay. Well, thank you, Winston. Uh, Stephanie, same question. Do you think um, the, the, the fact that people across the country, and some, sometimes in these southern states, are, are refusing to wear a mask because it's a bravado thing that Donald Trump also is not wearing a mask, and it's a, it's a political statement versus a scientific uh, concern about the spread of COVID-19? Well, I think you, you include, I mean, among those uh, multiple choices, <laughs> I think you've hit them, but um, I think people are so sensitive to being um, bossed around. I mean, it, it's really strange, but I think that they feel infringement on their rights. Um, does that mean they want to make the decision on their own? I wish they would, but I, I just feel that there's some attitudes and beliefs that are driving a lot of this like irrational behavior because the option, the, the, and also I believe there's latent other stuff going on, maybe even, um, this egocentrism or whatever, it's not going to happen to them in a way that's, that might be happening. And that the identified impacted groups are not theirs. So in addition to the resistance to being told what to do, even by uh, medical experts, there's a belief that it's not going to happen to them because the identified uh, impacted at risk, highly at risk groups are not Thing. Okay. Is Donald Trump trying to uh, create a new political strategy and his concern with re-election is paramount, of course. Therefore, damn their torpedoes, full speed ahead, vaccine or no vaccine, we're back. That's the quote. Is this Donald Trump's overt attempt to get the economy numbers start to roll up again and therefore see an increase in his polls and therefore hopefully uh, his re-election? To what degree are we in that environment? I don't know. Are you, uh, I, I think we're there. I mean, he's absolutely there. And he's get very, um, he, he himself is getting irrational, I think, and um, knee jerky. Is, is this apparent to the independent voters out there? I mean, obviously, the, the, those who follow Trump will do and say whatever he wishes. Uh, the Democrats, I think it's apparent of what's going on here. Uh, I think they say they see what's going on here. What do you think the independents are thinking on, on this topic? Uh, the independents tend to be thoughtful and mindful and uh, deliberate in in their thinking about where to invest in their government. I'm I'm hopeful that they might see that. But on the other hand, we have these huge issues of beliefs and values, and also it's it's what that NIMBY thing. It's not in my backyard. All okay. right. Even if I'm in a state that's impacted like like New York, and I'm up in Albany, hey NIMBY, I'm not. Let's get on with it. It's not me. It's not for me. Gotcha. So it might be fragmenting in that way across the country, especially with the lack of an overarching policy for us to all relate to. All that, right. You know, Let me I'll jump to Cynthia on this same question. Cynthia, what are your uh, what are your what are your views on it, and what what do you think is really going on here? I think he is absolutely trying to commandeer the whole entire narrative. And we have some really good um, uh, examples of that. There was the main data chief in Florida that was ousted from her position because she refused to um, change the numbers and to alter the numbers of cases. And so, so they fired her. We know that he's threatened Michigan that if they don't stop mailing out the, um, the at-home ballots and the vote from home ballots, that he's going to cut all federal funding to Okay, their we're going to talk about that next. Good point. I'm glad you're bringing that up. We'll talk about that next. Keep going. Okay. Well, I mean, just to threaten that is so incredible that as, to me, it is the same thing as what he did with Ukraine when he says, you know, I'm not going to give you your money until you, um, you go in and investigate Joe Biden and his son. And so he's doing the same thing to Michigan. He's And it worked with Ukraine, right? <laughs> so now he thinks it's going to work with Michigan. And I think he's going to have a little bit of a different response here in the homeland than he did um, in regards to another country. I'm hoping anyway that people will be more up in arms about this. All right. Well, since we're on the topic, I'm going to read a quote. 
he basically said that uh, Michigan is this has been done by a rogue uh, Secretary of State, and that Secretary of State actually got on Twitter and said her name was Jocelyn Benson. She she said we sent applications, not ballots, just like the GOP colleagues in Iowa, Georgia, Nebraska, and West Virginia. So what Donald Trump is basically doing is trying to set the stage. If you if we connect the dots, to try to ban all mail-in ballots, which many states already have for elections. And if you follow this, you'll know that with, if, if the numbers start going against Donald Trump, either in the polls and certainly close to election day, you can see this as his springboard to say, see, I told you this was a rigged election and create all sorts of um, disruption, if you will, in the American voting population. I can see it a mile away. Now, maybe I'm being... Um, Maybe my theory isn't uh, well-founded here, but he did it in 2016 saying it was a rigged election. Guess what? It was a rigged election in his favor. He had the help of the Russians. He had all sorts of help from WikiLeaks and, and the above mentioned. Um, Winston, what are, your, what are your feelings about the recent uh, threats that Donald Trump is levying against Michigan and Nevada about their attempts to um, protect the voting population from COVID-19 spread and they want to put in some mail-in ballots, and Donald Trump is threatening federal funds from them, falsely claiming it's illegal for them to do so. Um, this breaking news just came out this morning. What's, what's your thoughts about it, Winston? Yeah, it's scary. Any, any, any attempt at voter suppression in this nation is wrong. It doesn't matter whether it's a, uh, to protect people from COVID or if you're suppressing minority pop. It doesn't matter. We don't do that. This is America. We want each person and each... Uh, voter to to, um, to get this right, uh, to have a chance to vote what that voter wants to vote. And when, when you're prohibited because you have to stand in line, you may perish because you're trying to vote rather than voting through the mail. This is this is nonsensical. This is uh, an anathema to a, a free and democratic society. Well, it seems to me now's the time to address it. I mean, don't wait till August. Don't wait till September to say, oh, we really do have a problem about how we're going to get conduct this vote for the the general election of 2020. Uh, it seems to me now is the time for all these state uh, secretaries of state of each state to get on the same page about what they are and aren't going to do and, and call Trump's bluff about the fact that it's illegal and more importantly, that he's not in a position to hold up federal funds to any state based on their willingness to have a mail-in ballot or not. Oh, uh, we should, but this, yeah, they will, he will blackmail any state, uh, whether it's for... Uh, uh, you know, uh, unemployment benefits forcing workers back to work. We saw that from, I think it was Steve Mnuchin today, uh, saying if you don't go back to work, you won't get your benefits. Well, what if your workplace is really hazardous? Uh, you see this in in the vote voting. How are, why would, I get it. He doesn't want, he thinks this is going to be Democrats voting. But it's anybody who does, who just wants to vote from the convenience and comfort of, of his or her Donald own. Trump himself has used absentee voting. Yeah, and he says that it's fraudulent. Well, then why are we using it with the military? Uh, doesn't the military have a right? It's, it's ridiculous, and it's, it's transparent, and we see right through it. And it's, uh, you know, everybody says, when are the people going to rise up? When are they going to say enough? Every single day is a new outrage with this sort of stuff. So we've become not immune to it, but exhausted and where does it end it's not daily it's hourly the assault on our values and our democracy in in this administration all right thank you winston stephanie connect the dots for us on this one where is this threat leading us to and where will it end and um what will donald trump either accomplish or will this be his demise with independent voters and even voters of the, the gop party thinking this is a bridge too far what, connect the dots for us on this one. I think that um, the governor of Colorado, um, if you know his name, say it, but um, the governor of Colorado is very perplexed at any of this confusion or, res uh, you know, um, lack of interest in the voting um, by mail because Colorado has done it forever. So there are numbers of states, what, there are five or six states that have been on this voting by mail for many years and have it, have it uh, down, down. Pat. And uh, so I think it's time as as Trump has given all this um, responsibility to the governors in in the categories uh, relating to the protecting the people and saving us from the virus. 
let's have these governors who already have this system in place get on with some leadership. I think those are uh, that's a group made for helping every state get to the place where we can make this happen. And if we have to make it happen somehow on state funds or whose funds, I don't know, but if Trump turns off the, the post office money, we're not going to have any mail. So he could easily do that because um, that, that has been a problem going along and it's very worrisome he could do that. Now there's one way to save the post office and that's that they were required to cover all the pensions of the forevers who weren't even born yet that were gonna work for the post office. They had to put all their money into a great big pension bank. And that um, is a big bunch of money that if necessary, and uh, could be tapped to keep them running for quite a ways because nobody else. Well, I don't no think Congress. I don't think Congress is going to let them get away with shutting down the post office. I just don't. Maybe that's just me, though. That that would be that. That's where we are. I think that's okay. Where, and I think we ought to be paying attention to that. Be, as I've said, he's doing nothing but shiny things all over the place now. We can't do anything about it. Oh, we're finding out that everything's been rigged, including the Mueller report. There's been, but Barr was into that two seconds after he was elected, met, meeting with the attorney for the Barr report. Everything has been eroded. So, all right. do it. I agree. And we'll see how this one's going to pan out. But this is a bit, this is walking over that bridge. A bridge too far, and we'll see how either this is challenged legally or by Congress if he continues up with this. Cynthia, we're going to change subjects here because uh, Stephanie just mentioned shiny object, a distraction, and I can't think of a bigger distraction, a bigger shinier object than the admission by Donald Trump that he is using and has been using for almost two weeks hydrochloroquine. Uh, what what a what a bombshell this has been, despite what the studies stay, say that hydrochloroquine is not a preventative, nor is it a cure to COVID-19. Yet Donald Trump goes to his doctor and says, what do you think? And the doctor says, well, what do you think? Go ahead. Um, is, this, is this a distraction or is this now a strategy to once again politicize um, getting the economy back to work and using hydrochloroquine as a means and a method to get people back to work so that they don't have fear as they enter the workplace particularly in the meatpacking processing plants uh, or environments like that. Um, your thoughts in, on, on this, whole, this whole mess? Well, I have since um, read a lot of things that he is putting out the word, well, maybe not him particularly, but the word is going out to Republicans to say that you're taking the medicine even if you're not. And the scariest thing is that they're putting out on Facebook and Twitter recipes to make hydroxychloroquine in your own home by steeping different fruit skins. And oh, well, that's a perfect storm, isn't it? Oh my God. So I have a personal antidote on this whole thing too. When he first started pushing hydroxychloroquine with that, you know, what have you got to lose uh, line, my uh, pharmacy sent me a notice saying that my... Um, I have lupus, so I take it all the time. So I got a message saying that it was on a three-month back order. Then right, I remember you telling me that. Right, and then after the VA study that said it's not useful, it's even dangerous, don't do it. Then I got another letter or message from my pharmacy saying, oh, they have it now. So now that we're in this new stage, I wonder if I'm going to get another message saying, Sorry, the, me the medicine that keeps you alive, you can't get it anymore because these crazy Republicans think it's going to work on, you know, COVID, which we already know it doesn't. A French study said no. A VA study said no. We've had no positive. Well, are we, are we going to see an adverse reaction from people that blindly followed what Trump does and what Trump says? I remember very early on the couple that killed themselves by using a chloroquine that was uh, designed for fish tanks and the cleaning of fish tanks. Are we going to see uh, unfortunate either illnesses or deaths as a result of Donald Trump blindly playing Dr. Trump, not President Trump? And to what degree do we have this kind of problem? Oh my gosh, to the 10th degree. 
because absolutely people are going to die from this. The people that can't get their medicine, the people that, that need this medicine and can't get it are going to be at a higher risk to death and illness. Yeah, but the problem is we won't know it because it won't be diagnosed as a cause of death. Exactly. And then the people that are taking it are going to think, oh, well, I'm fine. I won't get COVID now and are going to go out there and get it. So it's going to raise the death rates of people directly from the COVID too. So I think it's going to definitely wreak havoc across the board. Okay. Thank you very much, Cynthia. Winston, your thoughts on this one real quick. Uh, we've got so many things to discuss. Um, I know we're not going to have time, but your thoughts on this, Winston? Uh, you know, it's why take a medicine for a fake disease that doesn't exist? Uh, that's, you know, I, 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 that was my first thought is, why are you doing this? Um, and if you believe in the disease, then you should be wearing the mask. Just, just because your own government says to wear a mask, it's a good symbol for people. It cuts down spread of the disease. Yeah, well, I don't know. Winston, uh, I'm sorry to take issue with you, but you happen to be using a path of logic in these, these comments of yours. Um, and that's something also, that's absent from this administration, I think. That's right. And Cynthia also recommended Republicans. I'm sorry to say there are no more Republicans, Cynthia. Yeah. That is a vanished species. The only one that I can see right now who, who garners respect for me is Mitt Romney. We don't agree on, on everything, but he is an olden days Republican who says, wait a minute, the emperor doesn't have any clothes. This is wrong. What he is saying is wrong for our people as a whole. Otherwise, people have been so duped. When we have our truth and reconciliation after all of this is gone, I don't know when that's going to be. And the realization comes down that we have been so misled and denigrated as a nation. Okay, it's Winston, is this a strategy of Donald Trump or just, was he just fear-based? Because uh, this all took place about the time when his personal assistant became down with COVID symptoms. So is this fear-based and something he was concerned about, or is this a strategy that that I just can't quite see? <laughs> it's hard what to is say. It? Every every Trump family member has investments in the company that makes it, but they probably have investment in every drug ever made. But so not, not to be too cynical, but it's probably he's thinking actually this is dangerous, and you guys wash your hands, and you all have to wear a mask, and I'm going to spray you with Lysol before you look at me. But I don't know. Cynthia's got some more insight than I do. Because it's bizarre. The whole thing is so bizarre. It's, it's Cynthia's bizarre. waving, but I got to go to Stephanie on this. Stephanie, wait, okay. <laughs> Cynthia, I see you waving. Go ahead. One quick thing. I think it's all about money. I think he invested in this medicine, and now he's stuck with well, it. He even, he even addressed that. He said, well, a lot of people think I own stock in this company. So he's he proactively addressed that. The answer never came out, whether he does or doesn't. I, I suspect that's too obvious. He's not that... He's not that ignorant or naive that people couldn't follow up and find out if he does or doesn't. So I'm not buying it, but maybe who knows? Uh, Stephanie, let's go to Stephanie on this. Stephanie, your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Following that reasoning, your reasoning, this is nothing but another grandstand, okay? Who knows? I don't think he's taking it. I don't know if he owns it. He might, but, and that's not going to make it, but he is, he's lying and he's only throwing out another bouncing ball to the idiot, the, all of the followers in the playground. We're all in this pen with him and he's the bully guy. And we don't have any way to counter it. We're all, maybe he's like an eighth grader and we're all second, third graders or something is the analogy. But he is only going to throw out whatever will distract you from the fact that he has killed 100,000 people and it's going to get worse. We'll be at that number by a week and a half. Don't we're at 92,000 right now, 92,000 deaths. I, I, I see it, nothing but an obtuse uh, reaction to 92,000 Americans dying. He called them, um, you know, when when doctors and nurses were coming down, he said, I watched them run, rush head into the bullets. And I, what a beautiful thing. What a beautiful thing. Um, they're rushing into bullets because they didn't have enough protection. They didn't have enough PPEs. They didn't have enough um, protective shields on their face. Uh, and he thinks it's a beautiful thing. How obtuse, how numb. How lack of humanity can one be to make comments like that? I just, I just don't see it. Even as, as, asserting that 
Um, life is not that valuable. There is a TV, there is a video that's out. It's been shown on the major net networks, which is where I saw it, which shows all of these quote, Republicans saying their stance on abortion and the precious human life, et cetera, et cetera, and then followed up by the clip on this. Like, you know, there's some times where there have to be some problems taken care of, and, and, and it's utterly astounding. It yeah, they're hypoc you're right. It, they're hypocrites on this issue. And um, I, if, I'm a, you know, if I'm 65 or older, or you don't even have to be 65 or older, um, how, how do I think the president thinks about my health and safety and well-being? Um, I've got to put a question on Mark that. And by the way, his poll numbers are dropping for that, that demographic. His numbers are sliding on the demographics of 65, not just the African-American uh, population, but also white, white America. Um, his numbers are sliding because they're not quite certain if, if he really cares about them or that much. He just wants the economy opened up. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. We, got three, we only got a couple about, minutes. We only got a couple minutes. I'm going well, he back to Winston. Care about the economy either, Jim. It's not. It's not any of that. It's just he just cares about him. It doesn't really matter if the economy sinks, if it grows, as long as he's kept in power. By yeah. Hook or crook. Okay, Winston. A couple minutes left. Uh, your thoughts about the firing of the um, Inspector General Steve Linick? He's fired four different IGs here in the last four weeks. Seems to be always on a Friday night. Um, this is over the, the investigation of Mike Pompeo and his possible interference with the arms sales to the Saudis and or now his um, hosting 24, what they call Madison dinners, uh, inviting uh, friends and, you know, friends, corporate friends, potential donors, and uh, using the taxpayer's dollar to fund such lavish dinners. Your thoughts about this and the firing of Steve Lingick? Uh, Donald Trump did it based on Mike Pompeo's recommendation. Your thoughts? One more level of um, accountability gone, and no one will do anything. The Senate won't do anything. Uh, they, they, I love the stories coming out. It was about uh, making dinner reservations and picking up the dry cleaning. Uh, no, that's not what it was about. We know that one for sure. You know, that was not what the investigation was on. Secretary of State should have dinners, should have dinners with foreign leaders. With, with Yeah, with I, I agree. But look, at, we got NASCAR Day, Dale Earnhardt. We got the CEO from Chick-fil-A. We've got um, Susan B. Anthony Group. That's an anti-abortion group. We got Laura Ingram at these dinners. Um, how do these people have any connection to diplomacy and the State Department? Well, if you wanted to know the answer, you should ask a, an inspector general, but I'm sorry, he's fired, replaced by a loyalist, described loyalist of Mike Pence. So I don't okay. think that's going to be forthcoming. Okay, thank you, Winston. Seconds to go. Quick prediction on next week. What are we going to see? More corruption. Uh, we're into corruption now. If you didn't understand it about what was the third world corrupt uh, places that, that we've watched all our lives go down in flames or not or endure a 60 years of some strong man this is where we are this is what we're learning is what corruption really is and also disestablishmentarianism so okay. that was fascinating and now it's happening to our precious nation stephanie you get the last word on that we're out of time i want to thank winston i want to thank you stephanie cynthia i want to thank you very much for this week's uh, Trump Week. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host. We'll see you next week, Wednesday at 11 o'clock. Aloha, everyone.